I've got the birds in the background making a lot of noise and <laughs> and they got the chainsaws ripping in the background, you know, from the neighbors. And there it is. We got all the uh, we got all the four wheelers zipping up and down the road, you know, that kind of a thing right now. And I'm doing this on um, I'm doing this on a laptop, so I do not have two monitors tonight. So I am severely limited in, in my and we are live, by the way, right now. So uh, we'll let some some folks. Um, get well, on. I'm even more limited because I'm on my phone. <laughs> I have no, I have no power. I have no internet. I have no phone, no lights, no motor car, not a single luxury. Like Perfect. Robinson Caruso, it's primitive as can be. Absolutely. Well, Carlos has joined us. Uh, well, hello out there, Spray Wash Academy and Pressure Washers Worldwide. I hope y'all are doing good. Um, we are here with Doug Gore, also known as Dougie Do. Who has uh, just, just suffered through Hurricane Ida <laughs> and is coming to us live from his uh, backyard and uh, no power, no nothing. So that's it. Mm -hmm. We're and Jason uh, and, is saying your hair is still on point. He really does have good hair. For you know what? Uh, and and like I just I was telling you and I told Jacob earlier is that uh, I just got done. I kid you not taking a shower uh, we had a little rainstorm come through here a little bit ago so i took the opportunity to go stand underneath the valley of my roof and uh take a shower so i got to wash my hair and take a little bit of a shower get all the sawdust and all that off of me standing underneath the valley of my roof you know so Love it. but then it didn't Love rain it. enough so i had to turn the, the actual well on and uh <laughs> fence off with the super cold water but it, it's so, all good so you can be out of power for how long um, it definitely going to be, uh, you know, at least a day, but I, I my gut tells me we're going to be without power for at least three days, maybe, uh, you know, a week to two weeks. Mm -hmm. Th this was a very devastating storm for my area and we're, we're a good ways inland. Yeah. Um, we saw, we saw probably 75 mile an hour winds, 70, 73 to 75 is what I saw on the, the, uh, the weather station app. Um, and you know, about eight o'clock last night when I stepped out, I mean, it was, it was ripping and a roaring and, and, uh, you know, snapped, uh, we lost three big trees here uh, in my yard. Um, one of them, it, it twisted it and then laid it down. Another one, it just, it snapped off about, oh, 15 feet in the air. And the other one it took, which I would have preferred, but it took it out at the roots. And so the whole tree just toppled over. Um, which is the best because right there where, where the roots and all that where you can throw all your debris and burn it, which will burn right. into the roots, and then you don't have to worry about the stump and all that. So mm -hmm. we'll have to deal with stumps and, and, and so on, you know. But um, I still feel blessed. The house uh, didn't uh, suffer any damage. It's all right. out, you know, exterior, out in the yard. Took out our chicken co coop and our greenhouse kind of a thing. And, uh you know, aside from that, we've got a lot of neighbors that are, um, you know, trees down on their house and, and, you know, roofs that are blown off completely. And, uh, you know, a lot of devastation around here. And there's going to be a little bit before it gets back to the norm. But, you know, it's like I said earlier today, you, you can't, no matter what happens, and you can transfer this into anything. I mean, I think, I think I feel like right now, woe is me. I mean, seems like every other year I'm coming on here and saying, oh, crap, look what happened now, you know. <laughs> but, you think you have the sense to move, but, you know. Yeah, you would think so. <laughs> Talk to my wife about that one, I think. Um, no, but, you know, no matter what uh, and what area you're in, we all have different things that we have to go through. And, and uh, you know, you have a choice, and that choice is to give up or move forward. And it's up to you on what direction you decide to do. And it's the same thing it's as in business. It doesn't matter if it's, you said Carlos was on here. So Carlos had to deal with the fires over there in California. Absolutely. You know, um, he could have just, you can give up anytime you want. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's uh, much harder to just keep pressing forward. But I don't know, I don't know where, if you're seeing the comments or not, but you got you know a lot of love coming your way from, from all the guys watching out there and, you know, and, and, and seeing you. And I appreciate so, it, but no, I'm not seeing them. 
But, um, you know, and, and, and Doug, we've, you know, and you kind of know that me being a Florida boy and, and, and going through several of these and, 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 you know, you, you being a Louisiana guy, been through more than your share of it. You kind of get the sense, you know, you can, you can kind of tell just by riding around and looking how bad is this going to be? You know, I mean, regardless of the devastation, regardless of the, you know, the, the miles per hour, the stuff like that, you kind of just can get a sense of how bad is this going to screw up my life and, and, and stuff happen. I mean, when I had three, four years ago, I had Hermine come in and, um, oh, I, I saw on Stephen Venturi, um, we've been worried about you. So um, safe, just fence damage and water was closed, but they, they, they got blessed. Awesome, Stephen. I'm glad awesome to have you. Yeah. But, you know, you kind of after you've been through a few of these, you know, Hermine was a category two and we were without power for seven days at that point, you know, and, and um, let the let the family, you know, live live in the camper because there was there was no, uh, you know, the travel trailer. And then whenever Michael came through again, we were without power another seven days. And I sent the family up to Phoenix City, um, um, Alabama, just because I didn't want them to have to, to deal with what we went through deal last time. It can, you get a sense of, it can, it, it, it may be a category five, it may be a category one, but you get a sense in your own region of how bad it's yep. going to screw stuff up, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, it had actually gone down a little bit from what it said it was going to for us. So we, we didn't even get it as bad as they said we would get it. And uh, <clears throat> I don't think we got the actual eye, which we were supposed to get. Um, the a storm little bit, a little to bit. the uh, east of you. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we got more of the backside wind than the front side wind, I think, which was the opposite of what was expected. And, you know, um, it's just one of those things. And this is this is one of those deals where, you know, you and I, before we started the live, we're talking where you have to look at your business and whether you're a single owner operator or you're a multi-truck, multi-multi-multi-truck company. And you know, depending on where your area is, your region is, whatever, and things happen, you know, here in the South might be a hurricane, you know, in the, the Northwest um, might be fires in the Northeast. It might be a, you know, snow sticking around for too long and you've got to be able to adjust and, and, you know, as the saying was before pivot and, and be able to keep your guys busy and keep yourself and your mm-hmm. company moving forward. Yeah, there's a comment here from Facebook user. I'm almost thinking this this um, this could be Todd, but it's only showing up as Facebook user. But having worked for power company for 33 years, retired a couple of months ago, power company get the main three phase feeders on, you know, and, and they go for the heart, the biggest groups they can get. I know that the last time when we were out, um, when we were out in, in for seven days and it was cause it was like the last transformer out there. There were only like four houses on there and we just, and they were just like, sorry, we got bigger areas, you know, to deal with that. Yep. Um, <laughs> Tommy, Tommy saying in, 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 in Chicago, it's the shooting. <laughs> that they go with. Yeah. That's, it's and, not yeah. funny, but it is funny. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, you know, J- Jim, I did go through Kate in 84. Um, Kate just absolutely kicked the kick Tallahassee in the teeth in 84. We had just moved up here uh, from living on the coast in Crystal River for seven years. Never had a, 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 a hurricane fart in our general direction. Moved in to Tallahassee and bam, you know. That was so, it. And now somebody brought this up and it, and it said, my schedule this week is screwed. Now I have to keep pushing jobs back. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that Doug and I on our on our pre-show we were talking about. And I mean this, we mean this in all seriousness whatsoever. Guys, if you have a pressure washing company in one of these areas that where you've been affected, it's go time. Like Doug just said, it's time to pivot. Okay. And I'm and I'm not trying to preach the doom and gloom. I'm just trying to give you guys a little bit of a of a a heads up on this. Okay. Um, You're going to have um, a lot of roofing, a lot of roof damage where if they had a roof job scheduled, they're not going to want to do it because the insurance company might give them a new roof or will be giving them a new roof. You know, same thing if they've got trees down, you know, or debris all through, they're, they're not going to want you coming to pressure wash or driveway or, 
wash their house. Now, once this is all kind of evened out, you'll have people wanting you to come wash their house off because they got all this debris on it, you know, that kind of a thing. Right. But you may the, have in the, in the coastal internet. areas, you know, yep. um, Michael was, a was a, her, actually her, me and, and Michael were both big blessings to us down in our coastal areas because the people wanted the salt and the, 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 the sand and the salt and the insulation and from their neighbor's house washed off of their, their properties. But yep. Guys who, who are who are out there residential, you also get into a, a situation with residential where, you know, you're going to have deductibles coming out of here. First off, the houses may get repainted and redone. Second off, you know, if you've got the windstorm, you know, $2,500 windstorm deductible on there in a lot of cases, they're not mm -hmm. going to have that extra money to spend on home maintenance. Or as you just said, mm -hmm. hell, the whole home may be getting made over already. Right now is a good time for you to hook up with contractors, with general contractors in the area or handymen and say, hey, I have this equipment. How can this help you? Because remember, a, a pressure washer is an incredible piece of machinery to move debris around as well, too, to move mud and sludge and to get it going. But, but guys especially if you're the residential ones, don't, don't just sit here and rely on the phone to ring. This is the time where you've got to get aggressive and make this happen for yourself. You know, as a good example, I'm going to stand up and turn around here. And a pressure washer, it, I don't know if you're going to be able to see, but in my yard here, there's all kinds of little debris, right? I don't know if you can see, I don't know how that's coming through, but there's like a ton of just little debris and that little debris, I could come through here with my pressure washer with a fan tip and I could move a lot of that stuff towards a, a burn pile or whatever um, pretty easily. Right. Yep. And then, you know, it's all over the driveway. It will be a good time for me to pick up a driveway or two or here, three there, you know, yep. and then washing down the houses. I can tell you right now, I've got, leaves and all that all over my windows and my truck and my you know everything so they are going to need you it's just not going to be as quick as you as might much. think and then you have some long-term impacts as well but this yeah. is where you need to be out there you know using your social media using your using your um your ability out there of, of volunteering okay you got to Hey, do you have, is, is your water supply still hooked up? Understand there's people that might be around you that don't have water supply available. There might be people out in the country that have horses to water and, 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 you know, cows and things like that. Carlos is saying it right here, you know, get your SE up and going for this type of work. Absolutely. Get out here and start, you know, update your blog on your website Get out here and do Facebook posting, post in neighborhoods. I mean, this is if yep. you have access to water, group. if you had access to water, one of the first things that I would be out there doing is saying, hey, this is Ray with Spray Wash. Just wanted to let you know that, you know, if you need water, I can bring we water can bring by 100 gallons at a time, you know, no charge. But if you're out of water, you need water for your livestock, things like this, we can take care of you and help you. And that, that's a very powerful thing, too, because a lot of people don't realize, like, my son uh, moved into an apartment complex, and he has city water. So myself out here, I'm on a well. I don't, you know, so um, I can have water anytime. All I have to do is turn my, you know, hook my generator up to my well, and I can go. But my son, who has city water, they're completely out. They're, they're, they're they're, they're, so they're, his apartment complex does not have any water to it. Mm -hmm. My daughter's apartment complex, no water to it. And she's over in the Mandeville area. She's here with me now. But um, so you, you think that, you know, well, they still have water because they got city water. No, no, no. don't. In some areas, it's, that's not the case. Carlos is saying Google pressure washing during a natural disaster. What company shows up? I'm, I'm guessing that's that's his, hopefully, you know. You know, I had a I had a call during Michael a couple of years ago, and it was um, uh, Mercy Chefs. Uh, Kyle, I think it was Kyle with Mercy Chefs called and said, "Ray, we just rolled into Panama City, and 
you know, Michael was so devastating over there that they did not have access to city water, did not know when city water was going to be turned on. And so Mercy, Mercy Chefs is, is one that, you know, that comes in, they bring mobile kitchens in and provide meals to first responder. I mean, because, you know, Michael was category five that flattened Panama City. Um he said, is there any way you can help me? And we bring a little bit of water and we have a treatment thing, but, but we've never been to a situation to where we do not, the whole city municipal water system was knocked out. So, you know, I was like, brother, I'm with you. I loaded up two, two, 250 totes and, and got over there, you know, the day, two days after the storm, Tanya and I, you know, put it in the truck and, and, and headed over to, to drop it off. This is the kind of things that, that are, are that you know you can do to, to get out there and help people. Dustin Force, Jacob, thank you very much. It's exactly who that was. And you know, it's this is this is one of those times where, look, one of the things that Ray and I talked about was texting, and we'll we'll talk about that a little bit. But you know, right now is one of those times where I feel like you could use text, you could use email, and because even our landline, believe it or not, we still have a landline, but even our landline is down, and you know to reach out to customers and let them know, hey, we're still here. Um, is there anything that you need? Do you need to reschedule? Do you want to bump? You know, do, what, what is it that you need? Yeah. Reach out to them and say, you know, we, we I would put together even an email, you know, and, and it, in that email, it would say, you know, we have the capability of carrying, you know, 500 gallons of water, 250 gallons of water. Do you need you know, you anything tanks filled, you need your bathtub filled. Because around here, like right now, I mean, we have our bathtubs full to use that for flushing because we're not, right. you know, running the, the uh, generator to our, our well pump right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's all different sorts of things that you can think about right now to move you forward and to keep you going. <clears throat> and it, it's one of those things where you also don't want to get into the situation where, yeah, I heard that that Ida made, you know, them go out of business, you know, so you still want to make sure you're answering your phones. You still want to make sure you're you're doing all that. Even if you at this point in time pivot and do something a little bit different, you still want to maintain the your company and the company's presence in yeah. what it does. And I think, Ray, I think this is a really good segue to get into. The whole texting thing we were talking well, about. Uh, before we do that, though, let's let's talk a little bit here. Carlos is mentioning, you know, insurance brokers in your community. You know, Carlos mm -hmm. Absolutely. done a whole lot of, of 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 you know with the fires and and, and a whole lot of, of of you know disaster stuff. But insurance brokers in in your community, demonstrate to them you're the company for cleanouts. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremy is saying. Um, Sal and coastal areas where the water's resident left mud deposits on private commercial property. Mm -hmm. I have done this through the years, had calls before the storm to get in line for service. I 100% agree with everything you guys are saying. But, but one of the things that I want to, to, to point out here, though, is that after this disaster, people, the one thing people probably are not thinking of is, boy, I need to call a pressure washer, even right. though they need to call a pressure washing contractor. Mm -hmm. So this is where you've got to step up your game at this point to make yourself relevant in this situation, because the tools that we have is, is are really amazing and really, really useful for what we're doing. Also, Look, this is also one of those deals where I'm going to tell you what the smart guy the smarter contractors that we have around here, you know what they're going to do? They're going to reach out to local news media and everything, especially if they are on a job, even if that job is their own flipping house, right? And you're doing something to blow debris around or to clean something up or do whatever, take a video of it and send it to the local media. You could right. get picked up and, hey, this great company, Cajun Softwash, look at what they're doing to help the community. They're bringing water to you if you need it, or they're, you know, blowing all the debris off your driveway or their whatever it is, you could get picked up by the local media just by sending them these snippets. Right. Boom, back in business, baby. Yeah. 
And this is why it's also so important to have a blog on your website, something that you can go in there and, and update, you know, constantly, you know, update it two, three times a day because Google's going to keep crawling it and showing, you know, the, 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 it's going to keep updating your website and making it relevant. But this is where you said the word pivot. I, I God, I hate that word. I hate after that COVID, but you know, at the same time, you may have to pivot. Mm -hmm. You can, but, but this is not going to be a death sentence for you. In fact, disaster can really pay very well. Um, but if you just sit here and roll over, it can be a death sentence for your business because of the things we mentioned. There's not going to be so much roof cleaning. There's not going to be so much regular residential um, uh, things, uh, uh, pressure washing. You know, I would be out looking at, at, at office parks that had like mud and sludge in them, you know, where the water maybe rose up some and say, look, I know y'all want to get back to business as soon as possible and make it like this never happened. We can, we can do that for you right now. You know, we have access to water. We can get these sidewalks cleaned up and, and looking good for you. It's not only that, but I mean, there in my area, there are so many trees down. I mean, got them all over the place, right? Right. There, there are trees down everywhere. So even on commercial properties, there's a lot of trees down. It's, it's not that you need to go take care of the trees, but what's happening is these companies come in they chop up the trees, they get bark and they get leaves and they get branches and all over that. And then they're running them over with their skid steers and grinding them into the asphalt or the and concrete and everything else. Hydraulic and fluid and just it's a big mess. Utilize that. Reach out to those companies and say, if you've got good commercial clients, reach out to them. One of the uh, best clients of Cajun Softwash, when I was driving by one of their facilities today, I noticed a tree down across their road. Um, it, under normal circumstances, I would have gone and moved that or cut it up so that they could get through and then send them pictures, but I wasn't able to do that. But anyhow, um, my point to that is that there's debris all over all of their concrete and they're going to want that cleaned up. And now's the time if you're in these devastated areas to, to think about that. Don't, don't look at this as a negative thing. Look at everything as a positive thing and how can, and again, this doesn't have to be here. Carlos Gonzalez is on here. Carlos Gonzalez went through all those fires and he came up with a way to use his EBC product to help remove that red dye off of the houses and all that from the, the, uh, what is it? The fire retardant. Fire so retardant. yeah, you, you got to think about these things and say, what can I do to benefit yeah. the, let me, let me go this way. Don't look at it as in what can, what can I do to benefit me? What can I do to benefit my company? Right. That's to me, that's narrow minded thinking and everything you do, look at it as in building relationships and saying, what can I do to benefit everybody around me? Absolutely. Because by benefiting everybody around you, it's going to benefit you and your company. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And like I said, you get picked up by the media. Oh, wow. You know, Cajun Softwash was out here helping, you know, this this area, this you know, the old folks center that got flooded out, making, you know, moving the mud so the people can actually you know, walk around without slipping or things like that. I mean, there's, Absolutely. you know, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. But but this and this is going to segue so much into what we talk about later in here. But I'm just, you know, again, guys, this is go time. This is where you get creative this is where the salesmanship and the marketing comes out. And this is where that, that you guys need to, you can literally turn this into a boon for your business versus a death sentence for your business. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, there's been lots of service businesses that do not survive these things as well. So, you know, and, and I don't want anybody that follows us to be one of these guys that doesn't survive it. We want y'all to yeah. absolutely thrive and just do well, you know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, you know, so oh, Carlos is a great point. You know, keep in mind during declared emergencies such as floods or fires, CWA is not enforced. Forgot the term the government uses. There's no required adherence to in a national disaster setting. Awesome mm -hmm. news right there, you know. Mm -hmm. Um yeah.
I mean, it's 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 good. Uh, Carlos, somebody is asking you. Tommy is asking you a question. How many took you up the red removal on homes, the red retardant move? Oh, yeah, whenever you offered to do that. Um, Wild West, right here. Bingo. Yes, 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 yes. We are not just power washers. We are entrepreneurs. Get up, get out, and get you some. Absolutely. That's exactly what you should be doing. Absolutely. You got to you, you have to look at everything as an opportunity instead of as a as a problem. Um, you know, a lot of very, very rich people and very successful people yeah. are rich or successful because of something that was not working. And they picked whatever it was that wasn't working. They, yeah. they found a, a solution to a problem. You, you know, know and, so many guys. And this is another thing, too. Those of us that have employees, you know, with the employees, if you've got two or three helpers out there, you're the smaller company, and all of a sudden you shut down and you're not helping. Disasters like this is when you lose employees. Disasters like this is whenever they hear that, oh, FEMA's paying laborers X amount of dollars or Fred's tree service is doing this. No, my boss doesn't have work for me because he's not pressure washing for the next two weeks. This is where you can really hurt yourself and lose your guys. So another reason that we're sitting here talking about this is we don't want you to go and, you know, because, and I'm not, Help me, help me say this without sounding, you know, arrogant. I, I don't mean this, and I mean this with all humbleness, you know, because, but, but, but some of the guys that are in the lower end of the, the totem pole that are helping us um, for, for lower wages, they tend to be a little more transient than some of us that have put down roots and have businesses. Is that, is that talking about employees and, and if they're not paying, if they don't have a good, as we've been talking about recently, a good company culture and a good pay structure and knowing that you need to reinforce with your employees right now, especially that, hey, we've got plenty of work. Y'all don't worry about it, blah, blah, blah. Because if they think for a minute that you're going to be not providing them with work and those tree services is hiring at twelve fifty or sixteen fifty or eighteen fifty an hour for the next, you know, um, two weeks or whatever they, they you might lose them when you don't need to. Okay, so absolutely, absolutely. Don't let them get scared and make bad decisions. Let them yep. know, hey, we're going to find a way to keep work. If you've got to come out of money on your pocket to pay them, you you need to keep them. You need to find a way to keep them. You know, Tommy is saying, you know, we're problem solvers across the board. We have a vital part in keeping the world safe on so many levels through our crap. Absolutely, absolutely. Rich and Maria. Hundred percent, and this is something that we do every time we have a, a storm, tropical storm to a hurricane, come up here. You've got a whole list of clients. Send out mass texts asking if there's anything you can do to be of assistance. Break out your chainsaw, get some tarps, get creative. I was on a big project this weekend. I, I'm actually Carlos made the comment. You know, it's a great subject. Unfortunately, we're talking afterwards. You know, I, I wish I had not been so wrapped up. We were finishing up. You know a $20,000 building this weekend ourselves. I wish I'd have spent more time because, you know, it's about buying stuff for roof tarping. It's about talking to your property managers. Hey, we've got stuff coming in. Do you need stuff boarded up? Do you want me to go and, 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 and pick up things in the yard? Do you want me to be there as a first response and go check out any properties for you after the, 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 the storm hits. I mean, but, but be doing this right now. I mean, Hey, this is, this is Doug with Cajun soft wash. We were here before the storm. We're here for you after the storm. Is there anything we can do for you? Mm-hmm. And I really like the water thing. I mean, if you can move water, I, I think that's a good thing for um, a lot of people that are going to be without water. Yep. So do, do do keep that in mind if you can move water for people. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I want to go and, back to something. You, can you can you that that thing that Tom had said a, a few moments ago? Can you go back to that? I don't remember exactly what he said, but there was a huge point to that. I think it was right before that. 
problem solver. There you go. Okay. Um, and what does it say? We are problem solvers across, across the, board, the board, and we are a vital part of keeping the world's... That, look, that, that, here's my point with what Tom was saying. A lot of people, even including us, right, including us, we look at ourselves as, ah, oh, we're just, you know, I've got a pressure washing company. Or your family thinks, oh, yeah, he owns a pressure washing company. Yeah, pressure washing. We are a vital part of this, of what needs to happen, not just during a natural disaster and not just your company, whether you get into the, the sanitizing or just just the washing of the houses. And you are a vital, vital service out there. And that's a mentality you've got to have. To say, I am a vital serf, and you need to be able to portray that to yourself so that you, because that's what helps you sell it to your prospective clients and all that is knowing that you are a vital service. I can't tell you through through the hurricane stuff that, that we've gone through and even the tropical storm stuff, even if my, my property managers didn't say, yeah, we want you to do Anything, it's still, Ray, I appreciate you so much calling us and Absolutely. asking us to do this. Gosh, that means so much to us. You know, thank you. This is a good time to go drive around those commercial properties and even residential properties, if you would, and make sure that you send a, a text with pictures <clears throat> that shows damage to the property and say, hey, uh, Ray, did you know about this on this particular property? Did you know that that there was this power line down across this awning that you have? Did you right. know that whatever that problem is, even though it has nothing to do with what your company does or what you know what it is that you do, you're yeah. notifying them, you're helping them, you're servicing. Yes, one of the things we talk about in the plant and property protection class is Absolutely. be their eyes and ears, you know, because they're not walking up on a roof. They're not walking around their properties every day. They're not doing this stuff. I mean, and you want to build relationships, be their eyes and ears and tell them what's going on with stuff. All the time. You know, Carlos making the point, keep in mind, you know, you might be working from an insurance claim standpoint and may not get um, uh, paid immediately. Yeah, 100%. You're, you're right, you know. Um, yep. And you're going to have to let the homeowner know or the company know, look, we're more than willing to work with your insurance company. <clears throat> Just know that if they don't pay, you're going to have to, you know, that kind of thing. It's okay and, to say you that. Know, one of the things that we've done, too, with our, with our roof tarping that we've done before was, hey, you know, we're happy to submit to you. you. You're going to have to pay us the deposit part. So we would get, you know, money, a lot of money for the roof tarping, but but you would you would go ahead and get, you know, everything to cover your cost as a right. deductible part of it. We'll help you file with your insurance, cool. you know, and write you, you know, th these. But yeah, you know, get out there and do it. So I, w I okay. wish... I wish we'd have gotten on this weekend and talked about this some more. But again, my apologies because I'm a I'm a better thinker than this. But I just got kind of self absorbed on stuff. And um, yeah, well, West Tom, you know, saw a video where a power washer pulled over and put out a car fire. Yeah, I've seen those as as well. Um, Michael, do, you know, if you don't take what you do seriously, no one else with be be a pro. Follow the golden rule. When opportunity knocks, jump on it. Hundred percent. Yeah, and you got to be the one answering the door when it knocks. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and then Carlos brings in the, the you know it could be a tough sell to the emotion the client's going through, but it's a necessary engagement, and it can be a tough sell. But at the same time, it can be the best thing in the world because it's one thing you're taking off of their plate. It can be oh. a, you know, a a relief for them as well. And it can also be ma making sure that you are letting them know, Hey, we're going to try, you know, we're going to work with your insurance company. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're not kind of setting them at ease a little bit and helping them through mm -hmm. this, you know, that kind of a thing. And I'm going to do a plug for us real quick. If you guys are watching this on Facebook, I'm sorry, not Facebook, YouTube, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the to the to the Spray Wash Academy channel out there. You know, if you're on Facebook, share it share it out in the other groups. Share, share, it, yeah, share, share this thing. One of the things you know, we 
Doug and I talk about this all the time. And it's like, so we've got a, a great little channel here with 3,200 subscribers. I see, we see the guys giving horrible, hor and we're going to talk about this in a minute too. We see the guys with these horrible information out here with 10, 15, 20,000 subscribers on their YouTube channels. We're not out here pimping our stuff out and, and, and marketing this and trying to sell people success packages and stuff. So we're doing this organically, guys. So if, if y'all, if you could help us grow it, we would sure appreciate it. So, you know what? Just give us the likes out there on YouTube and, and share this out. So we would, we would so appreciate it because, you know, if you watch us, you know that we're sincere about this and, and we're actually trying to help our family and the industry here. I, mm -hmm. I think it's, well, it's kind of hard to dispute that how we feel about it, you know? Absolutely. Carlos said, yeah, you know, solving the problems for them. A hundred percent. You know, that is, is uh, Charlie has joined us tonight. MTH, you, we waited for you. You know, we literally are just starting this now because you're late. No. Because you're late, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, Carlos is also right. You know, don't pr price gouge, fair and honest bidding, 100%. Absolutely. Don't be that guy. Don't be They're going to remember. Trust me. They're going to remember. Like the, the water thing we were talking about, I, I would not sell the last, last hurricane. That was Michael that we had. I was telling people, hey, I will deliver 275 totes out to your house to put into a trough for your horses for your animals, you know, and I have people like trying to give me money and saying, here, take this. I was like, no, this is free. This is for you and your horses. This is for you and your cows. I don't want money for this. Mm -hmm. that goes yeah, we had, uh, but when, when the floods came through in 2016, we had several guys. So first of all, we have the Cajun Navy that happens around here and just, just people in general, but Lots of guys with their boats and going around and, and helping move people and get people out of places and all that. And you couldn't give them money. And yeah. I'm telling you what, um, like for me, I'd be wearing a Cajun soft wash hat or Cajun soft wash shirt and saying, no, I'm not taking your money. Just remember this company later on. You know, that's right. all. Exactly. I mean, it's OK to give that plug, but just say, look, I'm doing this to help. I'm. This isn't about money. This is about helping and all that. And just. Remember, we're neighbors. We are here. We're in your community, and we're here to help you. Just remember us next time you need your, your house cleaned or whatever. You know, whatever it is, it's okay to plug. Yeah, that, that pressure washing group, yeah, that is my shady group. So, <laughs> um, Charlie is saying my prices look like gouging to some, but I call them professional prices. Hey, you know, potato, potato. Um yeah, you know. It, well, I think um, what we're saying though is not to not to not to gouge your prices I and mean, keep your prices yeah, where I mean, you. Just having fun with it, you know. I mean, compared to ninety nine dollars, mm -hmm. Charlie probably does look like he's gouging, but you know, Charlie's one of those guys who's running a business and and you know, building he's, a business. He's light and he's done so good, and, and I'm so proud of Charlie. He's awesome. He's well, an look, awesome. Let's, 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 before we run out of time and I run out of daylight, let's let's talk about this texting thing because I, I really okay. want to get into it and I really want to talk about where where I see that. So let's 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 head down that path a little bit. Yep, absolutely. Let's go down there. So right. and, and I don't I don't mean this discussion to pick. So there was a post in Spray Wash today, and I saw the uh, my comment got a bunch of likes on there. Because the and, and I'm not using this. This is not picking on the original poster whatsoever. I don't mean it. To, to, and I to, haven't seen it, so I don't know. I so I'm going it. off of my personal views and experience. But but let me let you, let me let me let you let me. I'll I'll stage it for anybody that did not see it. He said, you know, I'm doing a. I offered to do a townhouse for a hundred ninety nine dollar or a hundred ninety nine dollars plus. $20 for the walkway, some SOB lowballing hack did it for $199 and included the, the, the walkway. So 
and it's a text that he's sharing, and he's saying, guys, stop lowballing. First off, I agree with the stop lowballing, but lowball to you may not be what lowball is to me, and and sure. and and we all have you know different ideas of of, of lowballing. But here's the point that, that Doug and I were talking about that. I see daily in, in the groups that I go and look at where people are posting text inter interactions with their customers. Doug, would you would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I, I see text interactions all the time. And text interactions can be fine, and text interactions can be good, and text interactions can even get you paid sometimes. But I, I, here's my viewpoint on, on text, okay? I doubt that you're going to find any, any, I'm, I'm saying find me one and I will eat something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> find, find me. No, because, you know, somebody might actually find one that does very well with it. But, you know, find me one good quality, solid company. And I don't mean a single owner operator, even though you can be a good, solid company. But find me a company with multiple, multiple trucks and all that that, that does everything based on text. And here's my point, okay? The, one of the things that Ray and I and, and many gurus or successful companies teach on a regular basis is to what? To build relationships, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this in the, in the direction of Eric and Lisa, right? Eric and Lisa Sheets, love them to death. And I had a text interaction with them. This has been a couple years ago. And it was about equipment and I had ordered something and the, a wrong part came in or whatever. And I texted and I said, what is this crap that you sent me? Okay. And I didn't mean it in a negative thing. I meant it as the same jovial Dougie do that right. they always yeah. knew, yeah. but right. the text came through wrong to them and it created a little bit of a rift between us for a little while. Oh, right. It's over with, it's all good. But my point in that is that, you're building relationships and you're using, if you're just using text to do that, you're doing it the wrong way because they don't know sometimes whether you're, you know, what your, what your emotion is behind it, what your feeling is behind it or what you're. So I can definitely see where, you know, somebody says, Oh, did you want to use, you know, um, spray that spray wash company? Or I heard they're a good company. No, you know, I, I tried talking to them once before and all I could get was texts out of them. And, you know, I just, that's not, they didn't come out to look at my property. They didn't, you know, nothing. And, you know, their text was kind of, I thought was kind of rude or it didn't make any sense or, you know, so they're never going to use you probably. So how do you build a relationship and how do you build your business for tomorrow instead of today? just by text. I don't think you're going to find one large company that does everything by text. They'll do I things with text. I totally agree. I, I 100% agree. And I think, you know, people are using this as a crutch. And they're hurting they're themselves. This as a crutch because, and then hold on, I, I got to stop. People are actually, there's a bunch of comments on here. Um, my, I, I got to, I'll, I'll go right back to this though. Michael Owen said, They'll remember you being helpful. They may forget you, you know, being helpful. They'll never forget somebody that gouges. Jeremy Maine is, is worried about you with the COVID. He's like, he and his two employees have COVID now. God bless you, Jeremy. Jeremy, reach out to me if you if you have any questions about that at all. I am running at about, I'm going to say 80%. Uh, right. I'm still really, really tired, but I can definitely give you some pointers with them. And, and you know, depending on how bad they got it. But yeah, if, feel free to reach out to me anytime, bud. There's Vitaly up. Hey, Vitaly, how are you yes, doing? Y'all like, don't know Vitaly. Vitaly is absolutely amazing. They don't have to deal. Uh, they have to deal with the occasional riot and and stuff up in Seattle, but but never a hurricane. Yeah, yeah. Um, and fires. Liberal nut jobs. Um, yep. You know, <laughs> MTH nut jobs and the way the time shook out uh, is price point per hour was told the price. Should be triple. Absolutely. We actually had a, a conversation the other day about that, about somebody where they, they were laughing at that, that horrible driveway that I had, you know, and people had made comments on that, that, that driveway post. It was like, 
well, your boss underbid that one. You know, I mean, you know, there's multiple people that said that, but I'd, I'd much rather be honest and say, yeah, okay, we're doing it. You know, yep. Alan Paul, guess I'm old school, brother, walk the neighborhood, shake hands and kiss babies. Absolutely. That, that's where I have messed up. I have been kissing hands and shaking babies. Um, I, I mess that up all the time. Um, you know, Charlie's saying he, he dislikes text and email. Wild West, it, you know, it takes bad for these younger generations. They don't know how to punctuate. Cursive and grammar is That's gone. Absolutely. So many people are saying, you know, yeah, yeah you know, you, 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 you attach the uh, emoticons on there. Tommy, Tommy is, now Tommy is right. It's a paper trail if it goes bad. Agree. Yeah. I think that the text is fantastic. Email is fantastic to follow up with. The problem is, is when it's the primary mode of communication, you know? And that's what we're referring to is the prime. If that's your primary mode, that's mostly what you do. It's all that you really do. So I don't think you're Rich building your business for tomorrow. We used to send out paper letters and emails as our yearly reminders to customers. Roughly 10% would call and book. Last month, we did a mass text for reminders. Got to close 80% booking. Huge difference. Absolutely. And I'm not saying don't text. That's not Absolutely. what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is there are guys out there selling their programs. There are guys out there saying, oh, I sit by the pool and just bid and bid everything by text and just click and blah, 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 blah. This is a tool, not a crutch. And I'll tell you what, if you don't have the basic sales skills down pat, this some bitch right here ain't going to make it up for you. Just plain and simple. Rich, you, I mean, you're absolutely 100%. You used it as an add-on to your business, but not as your That's business. That's not your business. Well, you have an That's not your business. Yeah. Well, Rich, and Rich has, has an established business already. There's so many guys that sit there and say, you know, oh, that, that's all I need to do. They, 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 they just don't. Look, I'm going to let you know, Ray, um, just to throw it out there real quick. First of all, it's getting very dark out here, starting to, um, which is also meaning that m the mosquitoes are coming out like crazy. And I have no power in the house, which means if I go in there, it's really going to be dark. So I'm just letting you know, I might have to bail on you guys. Oh, I understand. Years. I got you. you know, and, and, you know, we get we get we get kind of spun up around, around about this thing. And and if you got to go, I totally, totally get it. And, and you know, and God bless you, Doug. And, you know, you know, my offers that I've got out for you, whatever you all need. Anybody in that area, you all let me know if you all need anything. I'll be over there to, to help however I can. Well, I'm going to go in the house and see how it works out. Um, but I'll, uh, I'll be yeah. talking about about what, I, you know. Gene saying, if you absolutely have to text, uh, do a quick selfie video to make it a little more personal. Uh, I mean, yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> people are laughing at my baby shaker. You know, personal interaction for Golden for residential. Commercial, yes, it can be more efficient as a client, maybe five states away. But even on commercial, I prefer an email versus a text if we're actually talking about something. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear all the noise in the house. Here, here I hear. I sounds like I hear a daughter fussing. Um, all right, I'm in a private room now. All right, cool. So this is kind of, this. This actually reminds. What was that horrible, scary uh, movie? The um, oh god, what was the one? It was. It was like groundbreaking because they said they 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 did it on selfie cameras. Um, a horror movie. Blair Witch Project. This is what this is reminding me of right now. <laughs> um, if it, you know, Wild West is, is saying if they if they if they call me, I talk to you. If they text me, I text them. If they message me, I message them. I don't believe yeah. you know they contact me that way if that's how they wanted to communicate. True. That's a very good valid point. That that's is that is a, that is an excellent point actually. But here's here's the but that here's the but. There are so many guys out there that are doing these. And, and if you're the new guy, here's who, I'm talking specifically to you, new guys. There are guys who, who will prey upon you. They are predatory. They are sitting here telling you, buy my package for 9 dollars 
blah, blah, blah. I'm going to make you successful. Oh, by the way, I do a million dollars a year. How? I don't know because you don't have multiple vehicles and you're actually going to trespass, criminally trespassing on properties to, to wash them. Stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> but <clears throat> understand that the relationship is where it matters. And so many guys are sitting here bidding on text at this point. And, oh, well, I'll do my job for one. I'll do that job for $199. It'll be $20 for the sidewalk. Oh, well, some other guy said he would do it for $199, including the sidewalk. Well, whatever happened to, you know, hey, Mr. Homeowner, this is Ray mm -hmm. with Spray Wash. Golly, thank you so much for calling. I appreciate the opportunity to give your bid. I tell you what, I would absolutely love to work for you. We've done multiple projects in that neighborhood. I understand the rears are, are a little tough to, to get a hold of, you know, get in and out of those, you know, just that personality because a text doesn't have those vocal inflections on there. The text doesn't have the, the, Hey, do, you know, does the person you're working with have workers comp? I mean, I know that that's a two story townhouse on there, I would hate for somebody to be on a ladder and fall off and not have the workers. Just whatever it is, if you're going to buy a, a package out there, if you're going to decide I need something in this industry, you would be so much smarter instead of buying a technical package, but to go and spend money on a sales package, no to go spend money on a personality development. How do I maximize my sales? How do I talk to customers? How and if you can't do it, hire somebody. Exactly. If you suck at that, get a salesperson to do that, you know? You'd be surprised how much a salesperson, especially a good salesperson, can bring you in. I mean, a lot of people will say, well, you know, it's not income producing or whatever the case may be. But the reality is they can bring in a lot of business and take you even to the next level. Jacob Deal just asked this question, and he asked, so I, I've got to answer it because he asked, criminally trespassing to wash, would you care to expound on that, Raymond? I will expound on it. So somebody that I follow, somebody that is, is with the commission now who are selling packages, he did a video of an abandoned piece of, an abandoned piece of property. Now, keep in mind, this is a person who to his own accord, does, to his own admission, does a million dollars a year in sales, okay? Oh, I, I do a million dollars a year. I've got multiple trucks. Been doing a million dollars a year for a while. But then he does a live the other day, and he says, oh, well, this is an abandoned piece of property, and I just want to go check out ratios. Well, the grass is obvious. Okay, it's a building that's dirty, a snot. And he's even looking in the window. He goes, oh, well, there's stuff in there. There's stuff in there. Oh, but this is abandoned. Oh, there's a stuff in there. Oh, but it must be abandoned. I'm just going to figure out some ratios. The grass is clearly being cut. It's not an abandoned piece of property. If the grass is being cut. <laughs> it's a big problem for you. <laughs> you know. I'm sorry. And, and, you know, it, it might be cute. You might be going, oh, this is, you know, I'm going to do this. This is, you know, look at this. You are trespassing. You can be arrested. God forbid you go and F up that property. You can be held liable for it. And mm -hmm. the sad part is I hate the thought of the new guys in this industry who are watching this and going, oh, well, it's okay to go practice on dirty buildings that seem like they're vacant. No, it's not cool to do that. It's, it's not cool to do that. that. What if you set something on fire? It's criminal to do that. Oh my God. I mean, can, I, I just cannot, but, but yet and still this guy is going to sell you something for $999 to, to be a, successful, you know, pressure washers. Um, I think it's absolutely, I think it's shameful that someone, someone would do that and encourage people to do that. You know, me personally, I know that Tanya has two months of properties booked out 
that I could sit there and, and talk about ratios on and say, hey, let's go look at the side of this building without ever disclosing what property this this guy was even showing the name of the business and the name of the business beside it. Um, you know, I, I could sit here and do that to, to, to a multitude of properties. You never even know where I was. Yeah, that would be the thing is discretion. If you're going to do anything like that, yeah, I mean, discretion, discretion is something that you really need to do. I, I can tell you, we've had several times where we've had clients say, I, I don't want to be part of any of your videos or whatever the case may be, or they find out that they are. And then I'll, I'll you know, I've even gone back with one of them and said, look, can you tell that this is your house? They say yes, because they can. And right. we removed it. But nonetheless, you can get them highly upset using their stuff. So you do it in such a way that th people don't know what property it, it, it is that you're doing this work on or that you're, especially if you're practicing and they don't have any knowledge of it. That's just insanity. That's that's to me, that's just stupid. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but I mean, could, 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 I, I just really, really have a problem with somebody like saying, oh, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to go up to a random piece of property and start washing this out, washing this because you're breaking, you're literally breaking laws. I mean, you, you might be a slick talking used car salesman who can talk your way out of it, but the average guy who's trying to you know, start a pressure washing business and figure stuff up, he's going to jail. I mean, he's yeah. literally going to jail for doing stuff like that whenever someone calls him. And you think it's cool to put a YouTube video out there? This is why I was saying earlier, guys, please like our channel. Please like get us views out there because Doug and I will tell you the truth and, and not tell you just it's ridiculous right. crap like this because I think that is – not only negligent, I think it is absolutely reprehensible. And I don't use that word lightly. It is reprehensible to sit there and videotape yourself doing that and saying that you're doing that. You know, it's different if it was in the ninth ward and it was a foreclosed property, which still would be wrong. But this is a property that's clearly being maintained. The grass is being cut. And you're just going to go up there and start slinging bleach on somebody's property. It's bull crap. Yeah. Even if you're just spraying water, I mean, you're, you're yeah. opening yourself up to the, the, the criminal trespass part of it. And, you know, especially if you smoke an outlet, you know, cause a fire or somebody slips and falls because the grass is wet, you know, because yeah. you aren't supposed to be on that property. I mean, that's just I, I can't even see that. Um, um, Charlie saying, you know, learned a lot from Papa Puff. And, you know, he's another one that's right there in the path of you guys and. And uh, Dave Nazat pop up. Yeah. He's checked in. He's okay out there. Um, you know, so many guys have checked in over on the academy on Facebook. Yeah. So uh, they sound like the dummy rats party, always promising the people something where you pay their sister for ninety nine nine. But wait, there's more. We'll sell you equipment to make you millions. Yes, sir. No. Tommy, you are correct. Oh, don't mean to be yawning here, Ratchet. Oh, uh, you, you've had a hard couple of days, and. Well, it's still exhausted from the COVID without people. permission, a hundred percent. An old guy said to a young Perry, "Spend as much money on your brain and personality development as you can afford. That has the highest ROI of all your investments." So, yes, going back to what we were talking about, hundred percent personality development, sales development, sales training is so much more important than you guys can sit around here and debate. What's better, a, 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 a eight gallon a minute at 3,000 or a six gallon a minute at, at 3,500 all day long? And guess what? While you're doing that, I'll be out there outselling you. You know, this is, this is another thing about that that goes, that goes back to what you and I were talking about before the show. And that is, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that say, yeah, I mean, you know, I run this four gallon a minute and should I move up to the eight gallon a minute? And you know, I decided to stick with the four gallon a minute or, you know, whatever. And it's mostly because they can't afford to move up to that eight gallon a minute or they, they're really not getting it. The, the difference between a four and an eight. But a lot of it, I think, just simply boils down to, you know, they look at the dollar of it and they say, 
you know, I, I, I'm not going to invest in this eight gallon machine and realizing the amount of money that they make more money with the eight gallon machine. You got to think with your brain and you're not, you've got to, you, you've got to enhance what you do, learn more about sales techniques and, and just how to approach somebody to begin with can, can greatly change your financial situation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. hundred percent. You know, you know, you work with what you got. You literally work with the, with the, if I had to start all over again, I could go out there with a two and two point, I could start over the same thing. I could build the same thing that I had with that 2.8 gallon a minute red washer that I had to begin with. It's not about your equipment. Now, at the same time, you can't churn butter with a toothpick, you know, don't get out here and, and decide you're going to do a parking garage. Cause I literally, you know, one of the funniest things I ever heard with, with a, with a property manager, we lost a bid on a parking garage because they were compelled to take low bid. And the par property manager was laughing. He was a real estate manager for the city of Tallahassee. And he said, I swear to God, the guy showed up with a, a pressure washer on wheels with 50 foot of garden hose and 50 foot of pressure hose and said, where do I screw this in at? This was like a 150,000 foot parking garage. And he started laughing. He's like, you know, after the first night, I realized that the whole garage would be dirty again by the time he got to, <laughs> the it, you know, um, Uh, it's, 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 um, you know, again, it's, it's, we're, we're so going, going off the rails here. The rails. I didn't mean to somebody, somebody goaded me on about that, but again, it's about your sales. It's not about the technology. It's not about mm -hmm. the, you know, house call pro might help you be better at what you do. But if there's a skill to learn, I mean, Doug and Doug and I were talking early on. And, and again, I don't mean this to be insulting whatsoever. But if you look at, at the companies that we've known, and, and Doug and I have both been doing this for, for a minute now. The guys who come from the trades and who may be very, very good at the trades, it's not an insult to them, mm -hmm. versus the guys who get into this industry from sales, who have been in a sales type position before. In general, mm -hmm. the guys who are in the, who, who have been in the sales industry are kicking the butts out of the guys who have been in the trades industry. And I don't mean that at all to insult anybody who's been in the trades industry whatsoever. And I don't mean that to insult you that if you choose to be an owner operator with a helper, good on you. That's where you want to be. Not only that, but a lot of times in the trades industry, we get so focused on that particular trade or too many different trades Diversifying, we've talked about it with Scott before. Diversifying is a good thing. But if you look at like what Scott would say, when you diversify, you you have different um, entities, if you would, for that diversification. So if you come from the trades industries and let's say you were a painter before, you're naturally going to be always leaning back towards that painting side of things. So you're a lot of times I find those guys they, they focus on what they think is going to make them the money today. Okay. But they're not looking at that long term of what's going to build that business for tomorrow. And so instead of focusing on the pressure washing side of it, Oh, well, yeah, but now you need to paint that over there as well. And now you're going too much back and forth sometimes. Yeah. It can be good if you can do it, but yep. a lot of the guys from the trades, instead of selling, you know, what they should be selling, they, they, they go off on their original trade, even if it's lawn mowing, you know, whatever it is. Right. Absolutely. You know, Wild West Sam, you know, been construction rehabilitation 35 years. Mm -hmm. Mark Rhodes, welcome, Mark. Mark saying he's welcome happy. Mark. Okay. Doing a lot better, Miss Mark. Yep. 
Mm -hmm. Al said it loves how, and Al, I will reach out to you. Um, and, and I'll be happy to send you this video that, that I'm talking about. I, I think it's absolutely reprehensible. Um, it's just horrible. And, you know, it, we literally, you know, in, in, in my soft wash basics course, Wild West, it says, you know, when the only tool you have in your arsenal is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. I quote that exactly. Absolutely. You know, and that's where people get wrapped up. And, 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 the, and the, in fact, the context where I quote that at is soft washing versus pressure washing. You know, I have people saying, oh, well, soft wash, soft wash, soft, or pressure wash, pressure wash, pressure wash. No, it's, well, it's you, need, you need multiple tools. It's, Both it's, of those are great tools. Clean this. I mean, it's, I'm going to clean it. I mean, it. It's a hybrid clean. It's, it's, I may soft wash. I may pressure wash. I may do something a little bit in between. I mean, it's all. Yeah, it, it's. Hey, it's, let, let me ask you something. Soft washing and pressure washing. Okay, those two things. On rust. Okay. No chemicals allowed. Okay, if you're going after just rust, no chemicals allowed. Right. How successful are you going to be at removing rust with pressure washing and soft washing? Wait, hold on. No chemicals allowed? No chemicals allowed. Other than, other than a soft wash. Okay, so what's a soft wash? Bleach, soap, and water, right? So you You're can, you can go water. after the rust with bleach, soap, and water or pressure. How successful are you going to be without using other chemicals? And other chemicals are other tools. Yeah, okay, that That's right. what we're talking about. You have to have many tools in your toolbox exactly. in order to complete jobs exactly. successfully and really make money at it. And depending on the rust stain, I mean, you may actually can make it work. Apply something softly, but you still may need a little pressure on there. I mean, mm -hmm. especially yeah. if, it's, if it's a red rust, um, a mud, red clay type rust stain, you know? Yep. Mm hmm. Yes, sir. So, Doug, you have got a whole night full of just sitting there in the dark, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. You know what? Um, the advantage to me is that just getting over this whole COVID thing, I'm still exhausted. I'm, I'm exhausted. The problem is COVID has gone from making me sleep all the time to um, keeping me awake at night. And so I'm not sleeping very well. And then on top of that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm still exhausted trying to do anything. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not I sleep well tonight. Well, like I said, if, if you don't if you don't get that generator, you let me know in the morning, and I will head Absolutely. I will head west and um, and get on over there at you. So, um, yep. you know, my heart goes out to you, and you know, I know you got it. I know you're you're a man. You're a man among boys, and you know, you you got this. So, and I really, really, really appreciate all the love everybody sent my way. I mean, I really yeah. appreciate it. So Mark said, Mark said, wait until he loses. Now he's already lost his taste. Doug's, Doug's never had good taste. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, no, he's, he's. Uh, yeah, look at, look at my friends and know that I don't have. Very <laughs> taste. Look at who you teach with. Um, yeah. <laughs> now Doug's been, if you hadn't seen it, Mark, Doug's been suffering here now for about what, three weeks? At this three point. weeks, yeah. Yeah. I'm just now coming out of it. I think I'm about 85% right now. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Mark, we sure appreciate you. Um, Al, send me send me a um, send me your email. Um, uh, what is my? Do I have my email on a banner here? I'll be happy to send you a link to that. Here you go. Send it to that right there. I'll I'll send out this video that that I think is just reprehensible. And look for those of you out there too. Just so you know, I mean especially with me with COVID for the past couple of weeks. And then, um, you know, now the storm, I've got no internet, that kind of thing. So it, it may take some time to get things done for you. Um, yeah. And our apologies for that. Well, we are fun. behind on Academy and stuff. I know I've gotten a ton of stuff. We're, we're actually finishing up another six figure month here. And then we had the huge convention. And I didn't have you at the huge because you were sick. And, you know, usually we tag team tag team these things and, and you know it's been things are a little weird for us right now and i apologize so yep. andy taylor just joined us. life just got in the way a little bit 
The uh, yes, yeah, so, you know, it's that the uh, the old saying: the um, good way to make God laugh is to announce your plans. That's it. Um, <laughs> Mark, I'm I'm closer to Doug, so I'll take in my generator, and uh, I'm more than happy to. I'm to I'm, I'm hoping that uh, Lowe's is going to give me a call tomorrow and say that they got it in. We waited in in, in the store. The store they closed the store, um, and just let us stay in there. All of us that had waited uh, for the generators because they were having a truck coming in. There was about a hundred of us sitting in the store for about five hours only to find out that the truck never left Lafayette. And so uh, they, uh, they, they took our names and numbers and all that kind of stuff, said they would give us a call, and um, they didn't open up today. Uh, and the area is devastated, so it's no wonder that they didn't open up. But we're hoping that they will open tomorrow and that I'll have a generator in the morning. I, I do have an inverter that I uh, confiscated from Cajun Softwash with the new owner's permission, um, but uh, – so that has helped us keep our refrigerator cold and our freezer frozen and that kind of stuff. But, you know, one of the things that's just Alan Paul gave a really nice comment said I was outstanding at the huge love the class. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, we went, you know, one of the things that Tanya and I were, were celebrating with, you know, one of those romantic gifts that we bought each other was a uh, Generac whole house generator um, for um, after we sold our company because, what else do you do with just, the money? Just rub it in. And well, no. So I mean, we, before we started this live, Ray said, "Oh yeah, let me go get a cup of ice." So he's yeah. rubbing in. Now he's saying, "I have a whole house generator, Doug, because you." Well, suck. No, the point I was making about the whole house generator, though, is we are six months out. January is the earliest point that I can actually get my Generac oh, wow. out here because the 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 nation is out of Generacs. I mean, it's it's wow. not a it's not even a um, a local thing. I was like, well, I got a little extra money here. I can, you know, they're like, no, no, no. This is um, we don't have it. You know, they're they're literally that was part of the wow. COVID supply chain, and they're seeing a lot of stuff. You know, I'm starting to realize now we saw this before, or we talked about it before, but. Now that I'm a, a distributor or starting to become a distributor with stuff, there's a huge supply chain issue that's out there right now. Um, huge big supply chain issue. And this is all going back to 18 months ago of shutting the world down for COVID. Mm -hmm. And now shutdowns coming in and, you know, in a lot of ways, you wonder, what if we had, you know, the irony of the two weeks to stop the spread, what if we just hadn't have shut the world down? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would have changed. I mean, I think, you know. Yeah, yeah Mark, Mark Rhodes made the comment. Sorry, I missed you guys at the huge. Yes, why not go to the chance of getting COVID again? You stayed home. I completely respect that decision. And, uh, in fact, I know somebody was just saying who was at the huge has now, you know, sat there and reported positive and was saying how bad she felt um, out there. So, um, yeah, you know. I, well, um, that's one of the reasons we made the decision for me not to go to the huge, not knowing that I wouldn't have been able to go anyhow because I was just too sick, but was I would have already been beyond my quarantine time. But yeah. even so, you know, I just felt like it was the right thing to do to stay away from the convention altogether. Well, we and talked, Doug and I talked about it beforehand. Doug's like, mm -hmm. well, God, that's the last thing in the world that Doug wants to do is miss the opportunity to teach. I mean, just you guys, that I'm passionate about it. Doug is more passionate than I am. And, you know, he, he just, he, he did not, he's like, well, look, you know, I think I got infected on this day and it's 10 days out and blah, blah, blah. And I'd be past that time if I got that. But then, you got really sick. And even if you were there, I don't think you could have held your head up. I couldn't have done it. Yeah. To do anything. So, yeah. Even though, even though I would have been in that, you know, this is where, I mean, Ray, I'll give you a plug here on the same side of it. And that is, this is where I enjoy our relationship because it, we, we think along those same lines and, and, and never, I, you know, a lot of people don't understand this, but it is never, never never about the money and trying to get money <clears throat> okay so when we teach at like the huge and all that 
you know, we're trying to cover our costs mainly, but the, the, the point of, of the matter was here, you know what, we need to do this because it's the right thing for people to have you stay away. And, 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 and we made that decision jointly, you know, so, and we both had the same feelings about it and the same, th you know, thought processes about it. And so w what, you know, might be better for your wallet isn't better for those around you. And exactly. that's the whole thing. Exactly. You know, and I mean, we were, I worry a lot more about this. Hell, that was the, the first half of this first two thirds of this whole broadcast is guys, y'all need to worry about, you know, bucking up and figuring out how to go out and get business right now. You know, I mean, it's not, you know, it's not about, it's not about money. I mean, we're not doing, trust me, there's a, a lot more stuff we could do for money. And yeah. I've actually, if I really wanted to get cheesy about the money thing, I'd go out there and do the, you know, you and I could go do the 995 thing. We've probably got more experience than most of the 999 yeah. guys out there, you know? Um, Actually, I guarantee. But I have decided, Ray. I want to start selling those two point seven GPM Royobi things. I think we could. I think we could make you know like 50, <laughs> fifty five cents a piece off of them. And if we make sixty five cents a piece and we sell a hundred of them, then between that, that's sixty five times a hundred times six. Mm -hmm. six. Yeah, Michael. We might this, make sixty five. I love this comment right here. Sorry, Mr. Ray Convention. Money has been and came in a little bit late. I've heard good things next time. You know what? Welcome to life. They're yep. right there. You know what? And money we expect comes in late. And this is part of the reason that we build and build. And you hopefully, you know, you, you keep tearing and layering and layering and layering. And and understand it happens to all of us, you know. And and hell, I'll be the first one to sit there and say that, you know. Even whenever I owned spray wash and, and and I don't anymore, and you know now that I'm I'm technically technically retired, I'm trying, still trying to figure out where that part comes in. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the part of you know, Michael. Don't 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 apologize for that at all because guess what? More money, more problems. I mean, it, it, the only thing that happens as you build your business is you've insulated yourself a little bit more. You've, you've got things, you're making more money on there, but understand, I mean, there was times that Tanya and I had plenty of times where now all of a sudden it's, it's a hundred thousand dollar month, but there's $70,000 in, in, in accounts for, mm -hmm. you know, there's $70,000 in bills that are due and, and payroll and, and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's, it's not, you know, it's why you do the whole profit first thing and you get yourself a war chest going on. And, 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 you know, I think there's a lot of guys out there that, that, that say, well, I'm not instantly successful. You're not supposed to be instantly successful. That's why they call it building a business. You build it brick by brick, by brick, by brick, by and brick. And so a solid foundation. That's the best thing you can do for yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I sold, I, I sold, I, I have said this many, many, many times. I still believe it. I think if I was to have taken spray wash and said, okay, made all the money I need to make, I'm going to give my business to someone. I'm going to give my business spray wash to a new guy. If it was a new guy, even if he had the best intentions in the world, he would have failed miserably. Mm -hmm. Doug, you're probably the same way with 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 with, with Kenji. You, know, you can't sit there and do a million dollar business and just give it to someone and expect them to be able to understand because you have to understand payroll, you have to understand insurance, you have to understand scheduling, you have to understand the buildings that you're doing, you have to understand all these different things that that happen out there. Well, and for me too, I mean, um, we are, you and I both, we're the type of person that we're not going to walk out on the person that bought our businesses. And so right. there are so many unique little things within our businesses that, you know, um, I still talk with the owner of Cajun Softwash probably a couple times a week and yep. go over different things to make sure that he, you know, if he needs anything, he knows. 
you know, one of the things when, when uh, we, you know, <clears throat> when, when we got together, we put this thing down, it's not in writing. I don't, ha I'm not legally obligated right. if you would, but he said, you know, how long will you, will you help me? And I said, I, I don't know. What, what, what do you want? Four years, five years, 20 years. I mean, I don't care. I will help you forever. I mean, hopefully within five years, I mean, you got everything nailed down pat, but there's going to be those cir circumstances and situations that arise that are locked up right here, unfortunately. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm here for you anytime. And so that's about building relationships with him even. And, yeah. and we've got a great relationship. I like the guy tremendously. It's, and so, um, you know, it's, it all worked out. Got locked up in here. So we started a, um, a $20,000 HOA project today and it's, it's 82 townhomes. Um, I was laughing, you know, we were laughing cause there was a post in, in Facebook and I was like, well, I'm actually less than $99 on these, but whenever you get all the <laughs> add-ons on there, it's a lot more. It's 82, 82 townhomes for, for, you know, $20,000. And, and I'm, and I've been recording this and, and I've got all these videos and, and I keep sitting there watching the videos and going, crap, I forgot about this. Oh, crap. I forgot about that. I mean, and there's so much locked up in here that, you know, and it's actually hard to go, okay, I just did a little, you know, 30 second segment on this or a minute and a half segment on that, but I didn't talk about this and the, and the stuff that's just locked up in your brain that, you know, you got to sit there and really think about it. It's like, I've got to, to, to clear this noggin to put it all down on paper to put it in a class. Well, even thinking back on the government sales class, if you remember, you know, you, you did the, the government sales class. And then I looked it over and I'm like, well, Ray, what about this, 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 and that? And you're like, crap. Yes. And so then you were able to go back and fix those things because you get into and you don't, you know, there's so much that you get locked up inside your brain you over time. Automatically, you automatically do. And you don't even mm -hmm. think you have to go, oh, yeah, by the way, you should do this. But yep. you don't sit there and go, eh, 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 you know. Yep. And it might be a little thing and it might be a big thing. You just, yep. you know, that, that one little nugget that you get sometimes can be very valuable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 100%, you know. So what's Mark saying? Two guys have been helping. The first thing I told them, when you're able to put 10% aside, do not touch it. It's a good amount down the road. When emergency happens, have the nest egg to save your ass. 100%. Yeah. You know, speaking of that, that sounds a lot like the profit first. I don't know if you guys have been out there seeing this. I know that Paul has not gone out and marketed this because of deference to the huge convention and the, the PWNA. Now, PWNA has gotten canceled. But y'all realize that every year in Orlando, we started out in Tampa when we did the Spray Wash Academy gig after the whole boom, implosion of that other gig that we are part of. Um, <laughs> um, sorry, something else. Um, but so January Power Wash Store event. Y'all realize that Paul has hired the guy that wrote Profit First to be the keynote speaker? Mm -hmm. That's pretty effing cool. The guy that actually wrote Profit First. I think anybody listening to this whole interaction, mm -hmm. I don't know if you want a podcast, YouTube, whatever it is, it gets turned into a podcast later. But Profit First, that Mike Mac. Lowitz, I can't really pronounce his last name. He is the keynote speaker in Orlando that you get to come and see for free by attending the Power Wash Store event in Orlando. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty freaking cool. That so, awesome. Go to that. That is uh, here. Let me let me actually find this. I'm going to hold on. I actually need to, to, to put this up here. You're doing that. I'm going to take a nap. I am. Ex I'm not. I'm sitting here realizing how tired I am. Nap right now. Stop. Hold I on. Know. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to now put this as a banner on the bottom. Hold on. Create a banner. I love technology. Ain't it great? Except. Add, 
unless you're, you know, show this. So go here, register. Oh my God, what is that? Please tell me you're not doing like the Jeffrey Tubin and showing naked body parts. Oh, and no, I asked your share, uh, chair. So, no, I'm sorry. My wife came in to talk when she was talking to me, and she's, we have a gas stove, and she see, said the pilot lights keep going out. And I'm like, oh crap, because, you know, that's how we cook. Yes. And that means there's air in the gas lines. Mm -hmm. And so, if we go without the gas, then that means we got no power, no water, okay. no gas. Yeah, I mean, you know, we kind of got okay, I'll, I'm, I'm guessing I'm going to see you tomorrow night. So, um, <laughs> Anyway, powerwashstore.com, get there, register for the January event. The guy that wrote Profit First is the freaking keynote. That's insane. That's but that's awesome. what the Powerwash Store like does for everybody. And uh, that's been, a you know, the keynote event, you know, here for, for years, like the best event in the industry since, um, yeah. What's the date in uh, January? You know what? Go to the website. I don't yeah, know. I want to say it's the 16th or 28th or 2nd or the 1st or 31st or something. Yeah. Definitely has it on the website, though. <laughs> and you all know what? I, and I'm going to go ahead and do this in full disclosure. I own a power wash store franchise. It's not open yet. Yeah. So I am a little bit selfish on that. I love the guys. I, bought, I like the company so much. I bought it. Um, <laughs> so when is, have you found a building yet? Um, That's a no. No, actually, I don't want to jinx myself. We found the most amazing place today, and I put an LOI in there on it today. Oh, very awesome. I told awesome. you about it. Yeah. 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 The LOI, it's like $6,000 a month, but God, it's beautiful. Um, it's good. Awesome. Yeah. Somebody is saying, uh, OMTH is saying that uh, uh, COVID wrecked his wife. Things will get better. Yeah. Charlie's saying that uh, Power Wash Store has the best events. I agree. Yeah, they are good. So, Mark, Mark says he wants to. Jim has said that's uh, January 10 and 11. Um, <laughs> Mark saying, come, let's hang out soon. Come on down, brother. Jim, thank you for looking that up because I just went and copied the link. So, yeah. And I'm, I'm stuck on my phone, so I can't, which actually now I'm looking at my batteries also getting low. But Yeah, if you haven't been there to the Power Wash Store event in Orlando, that's, you know, awesome event. that's a free event and uh, that, that Paul puts on for, for the Power Wash Store vendors and franchisees. We bring in all of the people that all of the vendors it's called the vendor showcase. We started this out in Tampa the first year. We actually called it the Spray Wash Academy gig, and that was kind of what's kicked us off. Then it morphed into the Power Wash Store gig. And all of Paul's vendors, and Paul has amazing buying power because he orders so much, but all the people that he does business with come down there and, and set up booths. And it's kind of amazing. You get to meet the people that actually make the stuff, stuff that, that, that you're buying and um it, it's pretty darn cool i think last year we had eight nine hundred people there it's kind of cool yeah i got some people being weird outside i don't know what the deal is normally you don't get to hear that stuff because but all the windows are open you know because we have no power so right. yeah weird people out there Mark Rhodes saying us 50 plus guys have time to go fishing and drink bourbon. Absolutely. We do. God knows I do now that I'm retired. So, although not quite retired yet, my job posting is on indeed. If anybody feels uh, brave. Take on that. Take on the Ray Ray position. You want to, if you want to ride the Kraken, call me. There you go. It's one of the things I love about this company. Crystal Clean pays very well. They are very, very, very reward-minded. But you know what? You got to be me. If you can do it, do it. Be me, you'll make some jack. So. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, let's, let's talk about that for a minute. I mean, especially for some of you guys that maybe are uh, looking at winter coming up and, you know, um, Crystal Clean might be something to look at and, you know, end up making it a long-term thing, Make maybe make the move to, to Tallahassee and, you know, um, you never know where this could go for you. It would be, you know, I have referred probably 10 companies out for purchase to them. I am actually in negotiations right now for to stay on long-term with them. I love this company. I never thought I would be a corporate guy. Mm -hmm. and I'm not saying I'd be a 40 hour a week corporate guy. I may be a contract corporate guy doing training for them. I may be on acquisitions team. I don't know where I'll wind up, but I love this company. They've done everything they said they would do. Um, it's, you know, somebody would want to work like I did. And, and, and don't get me wrong. I, I don't, I work hard. I work very, very hard. Um, but no, it, it, it's very much, you're, you're compensated very well for it. So mm -hmm. I've made a very nice life for myself with what, what, what I've, what I've created. What we've Tanya and I have created. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it was food for thought. If anybody wants, again, here, I'll tell you what, let me put, if anybody wants to talk more about it, I had an email address up here. Info at spraywashpro.com. Yeah, I don't see it anymore. But, um, you probably could type that you could, could type it in faster than looking for it. I honestly, you know, I hate it whenever you're logical like that. So yeah, I know it. Um, how about this? It sucks um, in the brains of our outfit. You are that, that's scary that you're the smart one. <laughs> really is info. I'm actually gonna do the whole spray wash. I mean, dot. If anybody would like more information to see this job posting, but understand this is a um hard working job. It's a hard working job, and this is also a six figure job, six hundred and fifty thousand dollar a year job or so, but it's a good job. Mm -hmm. And it's an amazing company that 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 does what they say. And you know, here's something that I learned. This is kind of crazy, but you know, whenever you make $4,000 a week and you don't have the expenses of a business. <laughs> That's all not really good. Good living. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Oh, Doug, I'm so sorry. You don't have air conditioning tonight and all that good stuff. And I'm just, I, my heart goes out for you. And I, like I said, I'm guessing that, that whenever you're screwed tomorrow, I'll see you some point tomorrow evening. Yeah. I'll, I'll find out. I'll, I'll know probably pretty early. You know, well, Wade Padgett said he has a huge fence job coming up. He's going to talk. He needs to talk to you, Doug. You're jobless. You should apply. Hey, and we don't get, um, yeah, the crystal clean guys were, were amazing. Jeremy and his dad, um, Dennis, were, were there. They were they were good guys. Wade Padgett says, Doug, if I come to a shop, does he get to talk to you? Um, Tommy say I'm blessing to everybody that hustles their asses off. And Mark is out too. So guys, again, thank you all for y'all. Y'all say a prayer for everybody, everybody who's out there in, in Ida land, you know, and that went from, from Doug over to the East, you know, well, we have Chet Hingle and, 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 and Dave Nazat and so many guys. If you're on Facebook, you'll see a list of guys in, in, you know, uh, Stephen Venturi, David Rivas, all these guys you know, out there in Spray Wash uh, Academy on Facebook, they're all hanging out there. You know, send them your love. Tell them, tell them you're thinking about them. There have been postings on it. 
So good luck, you know. That's all I can say. My heart goes out. Been a lot, and I appreciate it. They may have done that, you know, probably not as much as y'all, but damn near near as much as y'all. Jacob's telling me I'm rambling. <laughs> I'm learning. It's, it's annoying. You know, you're talking about technology. So, so guys talk about technology, and we're sitting here bitching about technology. So I actually have my watch telling me I have a guy in Iowa Damn it, now I can't find it. Anyway, I have a guy in Iowa telling me that I am rambling at this point. Um, because it's just great, you know. Well, the I, only reason people hang on this long is because of my hair. Let's see, hold on, 9.36. No, literally, come on, Charlie. And I, I, he, he said... My watch is breaking and saying, you are rambling. Jacob is, is texting me. Come on, Charlie. I don't even understand what the Charlie thing is. but um, Charlie yeah. Brown, I don't know. I don't know. But, Charlie Brown, he's a clown. Yeah, don't let technology annoy the shit out of you. Learn how to sell stuff yourself. Douglas, um, please feel better. Please, uh, I'm glad you're better from COVID. And you know what? We're here with you. Call me. Peace out, y'all. Watch you. Appreciate y'all. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Jim Brown said he's got a 7K and 11K. Come to you in the morning. There you go. Hey, maybe we'll have to hit each other up in the morning. Yeah, I'm, I'm still waiting on the Lowe's thing. Um, I'll find out in the morning, and if not, I'll, I'll definitely look at uh, whatever options I got. Like I said, and if you start driving – east i start driving west we'll meet in mobile or pensacola or someplace like that and um i'll get a 6500 to you you know like literally in the back of my truck right now perfect all right buddy I'll all see right you. peace out y'all thank you appreciate yeah. it